We're going to talk about Roth chunking, the Roth IRA, such a powerful, powerful conversation. This is the number one tax strategy in America, the free money ATM called a Roth IRA. Welcome everybody to the Directed IRA podcast with Mark Kohler and this Matt Sorensen. Love him, the GOAT of this topic in America today, best-selling book on Amazon in its second edition. I'm just on pins and needles for the third edition. It's coming, baby. It's okay. Come. All right. Now, I've got a quiz question for you. Next year. What does this show and Steven Spielberg have in common? Ooh. What does this show and Steven Spielberg have in common? Um... Do you need a hint? You yeah, give me a lifeline? hint. Yeah, you you want to call a lifeline? I'm not ready for the lifeline student? yet. I want to blow my lifeline. Let's save uh, okay. that for later. But okay, this is like... Oh, phone this, a friend, you know? Phone, phone a friend. friend. What is or, the third one? It's phone a friend, lifeline, and I think there's, like, there's like a hint. Cap. A hint? Okay. Yeah, there was like a hint. One of his first movies filmed in Oregon. Mm. To Tristan, do you know? Well, or the studio? movie might be Jaws. Was that in Oregon? No, no, no. Oh, his first movie was filmed in Oregon. Uh... Okay, Harry and the Hendersons? No, no. Uh, did he do that? Okay, you ready to call in your lifeline with Tristan? Uh, he does not know either. Starts with a G. Goonies, Goonies he oh, got it. Goonies, yeah. Because who was one of the oh, main characters? Chunk, okay. Chunk. Gosh, I should have connected that because that is we always <laughs> mention Chunk. Well, oh my gosh. Hopefully some of you are like putting up with our little fun it's here. We the... love to keep this topic light, but we're going to talk about Roth Chunking. And okay, our show gonna, goes yeah. out to Chunk. In the yeah. movie Goonies from 1980, whatever, yeah. one of the first He was such a book. lovable character. He was. And he does I the truffle him. shuffle, you know. Yes. You your make your heart went out it. to him. Yeah. You got to do it. You oh, know. when they you, they were going to scare him with the blender, my heart went out to him, yeah. you know. They, he was, they were like, <laughs> I'll tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> when I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that scene. All right. So anyway, we're going to talk right. about Roth chunking, the Roth IRA, such a powerful powerful conversation this is the number one tax strategy in america the free money atm called a roth ira yeah, yeah good math I, yeah for everybody that doesn't know what the heck a roth ira is it's like you put your money in you don't get a tax deduction but you invest it you don't pay taxes you're growing the investment and then the money comes out tax-free at retirement this is like the only way to grow and make money in america like from investing and never pay tax legally like mm -hmm. this is the strategy this like is it. congress told us all right if you use this bank account here and you invest from this account, the money you make in it, you don't have to pay us taxes. And you know what? If you keep investing it for the long haul, you don't pull it out to your 59 and a half, we will make you pay taxes on anything that you made in that account. Nothing. And I just don't know why every American's like putting their first 6,500 bucks in this thing every year because this is the money you don't pay taxes on. Instead, everybody's doing it backwards. Yeah. Whatever money's left over, oh, maybe I'll throw that in a Roth IRA. Guys, we're doing it backwards. Yep. Start here, <laughs> the tax-free bucket. Oh my gosh, the best starting point. And this is for your children. Kids at age one can have a Roth IRA with earned income. There's a lot of methods to get money into children's, young teenagers and older for sure, get their Roth IRAs going. Now, here's the framework for today's show. We want to talk about the Roth party. That, and what's Gamma what? Gamma Sigma Chi yeah, Roth? Yeah, I think S Sigma Chi Roth. Sigma Chi Roth. And I got to get that down. Gamma Gamma Roth is pretty good Gamma too. Gamma Roth. I like yeah. that. So <laughs> you want to be in the Roth party. You want to be in that sorority or fraternity Roth party. And if, if we, we just told you, get you a little bit excited, you're like, I'm in. 500 bucks a, a month, I can start saving right now. That sounds great. Well, based on your income, you could either go in the front door or we'll give you a pass to the back door. And we'll show you kind of this little two-step process. You got to walk around in the back, open a gate, and then you can go in the door. It's two steps. The <laughs> income level will tell you if you can just knock on the front door, like in 16 candles, and Michael Anthony Hall just walks right in. It was okay. You know, that's all right. But sometimes you got to go around back. So I love that scene with Jake at mm -hmm. the end. Now, with that point of view, there's going to be some rules. You got, you know, of when you have to go around back, how do you get through the gate? And that's when conversion comes into play, a little bit of year-end tips here, and chunking. So that's how we're, we're going to kind of unpack it in that manner. What do mm -hmm. you think, Matt? Yeah, Tell so, us about the party. Yeah, the party, a lot of you have been told, oh, you're high income, you can't come to the Roth party. Oh, you maxed out your 401k at work, you can't come to the Roth IRA party. Oh, you have a solo 401k you use, you can't also come over to the Roth IRA party. All untrue. The Roth IRA party is open to everyone. 
You just need to know the door to get mm, in. Love it. And the front door is the one staring everyone in the face, and they think, oh, that's where you go in. But the back door is how the wealthy get in to the Roth IRA party. I love it. It's actually the cool door. So, okay. so here's the numbers for 2023. The front door is open to any of you that make less than 153000 of AGI if you're single or 228,000 if you're married finally joint. Now there's a little phase out for about 20 grand before those numbers. But if you make more than 153 and you're single or make more than 228 married finally joint, you're going to be having to go around the back door. And that's okay. It's okay. But if you're under those limits, you're like, I'm in. And so you're going to set up your little Roth IRA at Schwab or Acorns or if you're starting to really compound it and build it, you're going to start self-directing as soon as possible. We've got a great Roth IRA uh, setup procedure that's super simple here at Directed IRA, but we want you to kind of get some momentum. Start saving, start saving, get that money rolling, and continue to learn here on the show when you can unlock it and really get some, some good investing going. But that's the front door. Yeah. Yeah. And the front door is the easy one. That's the tr typical one that Roth IRAs were built for was the front door. Everyone knows it, but there is that high income limit. So if you're over those limits, well, how do I get in? This is the backdoor Roth IRA. Now I've broken the backdoor Roth IRA into four things. I it's, thought it was two steps. It's two steps, but it's really four things within the two steps. Okay, fair enough. All right. Because it's it's a two step in each step. All right. Okay. We did some line dancing last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, it's a two step. I was already tripping over myself there. That was, it, wasn't that fun? Did that you have was fun? fun? Oh yeah, it was, that was, it good. was a great time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. let me hit the four things. Okay. If you don't mind, because yeah, it takes so four things, it. You but you do it in two steps. Okay. okay. Four things. You need a traditional IRA account. You're going to have a traditional contribution. You're going to have a Roth IRA account, and you're going to have a Roth conversion. There are four things that are going to happen here mm. that, in the end, give you 6500 bucks in a Roth IRA every freaking year. Okay? And really, the two steps are going to be a non-deductible traditional contribution, step one, with a Roth conversion, step two. I love it. Now, your advisors would never, ever, ever tell you to do a non-deductible traditional because the two benefits of a traditional is a tax deduction <laughs> yeah. and tax deferred growth. Well, if I don't even get a tax deduction, why would I do this? And so you may you say, I want to do a non-deductible traditional contribution when you call up your fidelity advisor or whoever, and they go, that's stupid. And you're going to go, no, I'm smarter than you because on day two, I'm going to convert it to Roth with no tax. Oh, and if they go, well, you can't do that. You know, so you can go learn and read. And then on day three, you're going to fire that dumbass and you're going to go get a real advisor. So did I just say that out loud? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a little history lesson here, but when Ross were created, they said, hey, we want to make sure only the non-wealthy can use this. So they put an income restriction on it, and they also put a restriction on the ability to convert and said, we won't let anybody convert over from traditional over to Roth. But what happened in 2012 is Congress said, we better take, let's, let's let people convert from traditional to Roth. And the reason they did that is because More they revenue. wanted tax revenue. The government <laughs> wanted tax revenue. They're like, let's get everyone over here. We can spend that money now if we get people to convert. But what they didn't do is they didn't change the rules. So they left this little loophole open for us that is this back to our Roth IRA because now I just do my traditional contribution and convert it to Roth because there's no income restriction on the Roth conversion piece. And so that's how we're getting around this and where this loophole was frankly created. It was Congress getting greedy and wanted tax money. So they, they remove the high income restriction on high incomers converting to Roth. Hence, we can do the Roth IRA every year on the 6,500 bucks. So, but remember, you're going to need a traditional IRA account if you don't already have one. You're going to make a traditional contribution that is non-deductible. Now, when you contribute it, it's just a regular traditional contribution. The classification of it being non-deductible is actually going to happen on your tax return. And I want to get to that later here is okay. what's going to go on your tax return. We want to talk about that here in a second. But just the mechanics of getting it in, it's a traditional contribution, then I'm going to do a form. You have to do a, a Roth conversion in writing. And what's going to happen is your IRA custodian, whether it's directed IRA, whether it's us, or you got, they're doing this at Fidelity, they're going to send you a 1099R. Now that 1099R, when I get my tax return and I'm doing my 1040, there's a form on your 1040 called 8606 that you're going to claim the Roth conversion and the 1099R, but you're going to say, it was on a non-deductible contribution, therefore it's non-taxable. 
So in the end, you never took a deduction on the 6,500 bucks. You converted it. And since it was not deductible, there was no tax on it. So in the end, it's just you're in the party. Like, you're in the party. You're, you're you holding up your red cup and you're like, <laughs> fill me up. You're like, I'm in. I'm, <laughs> I'm, in. In. I'm in. And all your friends are like, hey, hey you, made it. Yeah. you made it. Yeah, I had to go around back. Yeah. <laughs> but I got in. Me too. I had to go through the back door too. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Now, uh, now on this two-step process, it can sound complicated reporting it as well. The easy answer is, here is if you do this, you don't need to call your accountant before you do it. But you need to tell your accountant, whoever's preparing your taxes, what yeah. you did. So when they see these 1099 R's and they're scratching their head, if they don't speak, Mark Kohler or Matt Sorensen, and they're not in our certified tax pro program, they're gonna, they may not know what you're doing. So you might have to help educate them or fire them as well and upgrade. <laughs> you may be up-leveling your financial advisor and up-leveling your tax advisor. We've got the teams to help you find those people. Now, by doing that two-step process, it, it can also be tricky calling these big brokerages and because they're going to go, they, they may even think you made a mistake. They're going to go, oh, you really wanted a Roth IRA. So they collapse the account thinking they're doing you a favor and jack up the whole process. So you want to go into this very intentional. Now, at Directed IRA, we literally have a process of uh, an application. I want to do the back door. So we set up the traditional account and three seconds later, set up, move it and set up the Roth and have you sign all the forms in one package. So we know it doesn't get effed up. That is the way to do it. It's yeah. super easy. Yeah, I was doing the backdoor Roth IRA myself before we even had directed. And I was bent because every place I would go to try and do this, it was like, I was like, you guys are morons. Like, this is how it works. And they kept giving me the wrong form. They would give me like a recharacterization form. I'm like, no, that's gonna jack this up. It has to be a Roth conversion form. Um, and every year I went through the same hassle. So we decided, let's just make it simple. Let's create an app called the Backdoor Roth IRA, where we're just gonna do all the gymnastics and you know all these these four things. <laughs> and then DocuSign, ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. Done. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> this is what you want, this is what you get. Yeah. You can Done. literally do this on your phone in bed while you're watching Thursday Night Football on Prime. Yeah. Uh, who's the game this week? I don't even know. Okay. I don't now, even know. Sports? I don't even know. I know. Dude, I, I do not know sports anymore. I just... We got to get you a life. Yeah. You've got little girls. You, you know, yeah. got to get you some testosterone going. Yeah, All true. right, now. Yeah. Did, I, did I tell you Thanksgiving at my house? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got three daughters, two stepdaughters, my wife, my cat that's a girl. Uh, my <laughs> wife brought a friend who, who has a daughter. No, no husband, no son. She has two nieces in town oh that are goodness. twins who both brought friends, girls. <laughs> oh my <laughs> that gosh. Was me, dude. At least tell me you cut the turkey, right? Were <laughs> oh, you in charge? Definitely <laughs> cut the turkey. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh, you're, you're a man on an island. Yeah. On an island. Well, we're proud of you. Thanks for, you know. Thanks for, yeah. You're representing. <laughs> yeah. Representing. All right. <laughs> okay, now here's one of the unique rules. Let's get into So you, you get the steps there, a directed IRA. If you call your financial advisor, Ask them right out of the gate, do you know what a backdoor Roth is? I need to do the traditional and the conversion. If they don't know, it's going to be more work. If you come over, you can roll it, do the whole process at Directed IRA. We have a, a chat line. We have a phone number. The team is so helpful. So we can help you out in the process. Then again, communicate to your accountant. Done. Okay. But you have to know about a big rule here. Mm. Congress said... Back when they changed the rule in 2012 and said, hey, we're going to open the door. We're going to let people convert to Roth. And they could do this backdoor Roth thing. If they, Well, actually, they, they didn't even see the backdoor Roth coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't even see it coming. But they said, but one of the rules in that, that, that law in 2012 was, if you want to make a new non-deductible traditional con contribution, you have to first convert all of your, Roth, your traditional money to Roth first. Yeah. You've got to do the conversion of any traditional... That's like, deductible, your regular deductible dollars. Yeah, your regular deductible dollars. Because if you want to be in the Roth party, you got to, you can't be a part of the traditional party down the street. you got to cut ties with them. you got you got no more traditional parties for you. You want to be in the cool party. No more Kappa Kappa traditional. No Kappa Kappa traditional. Yeah. You, you've, <laughs> you, you've now pledged and moved over. You're so, Gamma Gamma Roth. You're gamma all Gamma Roth. You're all Gamma Gamma Roth. <laughs> Okay, now, now on that process, to get converted to Roth, you have two ways you can do it. You can move that traditional money to a 401k, good. 
With no, no conversion. No even. conversion required. Used to stay traditional. You didn't get taxed. Yep. Or we're back to chunk. To chunk. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to come to chunk. So those are the, that's that. Maybe you can explain the rule a different way. Or yeah. Well, how would you explain that rule of. Yeah. So, like, the, the, basically what happened after they changed the rule is, is, that, is they said, well, any of your deductible contributions, that gets converted first. And actually, it gets pro rata with your non deductible. But basically, what it means in the end is if you have traditional IRA dollars, the regular traditional IRA dollars, where you took a tax deduction to put it in, which is what 99% of everyone's doing, that's the whole point of traditional, is they're going to say, you got to convert those traditional IRA dollars, whether that's in a traditional IRA or a SEP IRA. Now, your traditional 401k dollars, they don't care about. They'll can stay in your traditional 401k, you do not need to convert. But any traditional IRA dollars that are the regular deductible type, that's going to need to get converted in a pro rata rate rate with your non-deductible. Now, basically that means you need to convert that stuff before you do your non-deductible. We can get into the weeds on that, but 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 the, the non-deductible is what the backdoor Roth is every year. Yes. And so we got to get this thing cleared out here with the regular deductible traditional. So that was step one, which is just throw it over to the 401k. the 401k. That's the easiest if you can do that. And particularly those that have a solo K, psh, awesome, because you can be self-directing it. It's not going in your corporate 401k, whatever. But then the other option is... Yeah, well, now, by the way, I think I have a good analogy for the 401k. Oh, yeah. See, if, so if, if you've got that traditional relationship over at Kai... So, uh, Kappa Kappa Traditional. Yeah, Kappa Kappa Traditional. And you're like, hey, I'm go I got to get that out of there. You're going to go to graduate school. You're just going to, uh, you, you know, yeah. you're an undergrad. You're yeah. in, so you're, now you're saying, I'm just going to move it out of the whole fraternity system. Mm. The Greek system is out of the Greek system. Because the Greek system has this rule... But if I move that traditional mm -hmm. to graduate school and just get it out of the mix, I can mm. get I, I can go back to the Greek system, which brings us to step two. Okay. <laughs> so the Greek system says, <laughs> I'm reaching, I'm okay. reaching, I'm reaching. That was okay. a stretch, but I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Is you say, okay, I've got to convert all this traditional over at the traditional house to the, to the Roth house. Hmm, I got a couple hundred grand there. Man, that's going to cost me. That's yeah. going to cost me. Yeah. Now, there's no penalty. That's there's some no, serious that's, hazing. Yeah, that's, that's going to that, hurt. That, that's <laughs> pledging for at least a couple of weeks. And I mean, I mean, you don't know what you're running down the through the quad naked. I mean, you're doing all sorts of stuff to get into the Roth party at that point. <laughs> and so it's going to hurt. But if you're saying, you know what, I've got 200 grand in traditional and I've got to convert it to Roth, what is my tax bill going to be? There's no penalty. Yeah. It's not like you're withdrawing it from the traditional. You're just converting it. And so, um, yes, you... That process takes some tax to get out of that party. But if you do it in chunks, we can make sure we stay out of a higher bracket and we can do it in pieces and make it part of a good three to five year plan, two to three year plan, five to 10 year plan. Because we, we have clients come in that have these big fat traditionals from an old 401k. It's going to take some time to get over to Roth without, and we have other clients rip the bandaid off. I'm going to offset it with some real estate strategies and just be done with it all at once. So that, that chunking concept becomes very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, if you can do it, just get it over with, I, I mean, you know, you got like 20 grand laying around or something, just get that freaking converted and be done with it. But those are the way I can pay the tax, right? No, do not let that be you. <laughs> no, do not do that. Okay, like your I because if you have that, let's say you do that. By the way, you're taking a distribution. If you're not fifty nine and a half, you're paying a ten percent early withdrawal penalty to pay the tax. Yeah, to pay IRA. the tax. You're reducing your amount of money in your IRA, which is mm -hmm. dumb to begin with. We're trying so hard to get money in this these these tax free dollars that can grow and build this tax free wealth. Um, why would I cut into that? Yeah. So pay the bill personally. I even have I even have lots of clients over the years to be like, dude, I don't give. You know, I don't give a rat's ass. I'm just going to be like, convert the whole damn thing. I'll put it on an installment plan over the next three or four years to pay this off with the IRS, you know. Um, and I've had clients that have had like really good deals and really good opportunities that took them 50 grand or 100 grand to do. And like, I'm just going to convert the whole damn thing. If I don't have the money to pay it, I'll worry about the IRS down the road. Yeah, no, let's give you a practical example. This is fun. We need to do more examples, frankly, on the show. Yeah. So let's say uh, you've got this $200,000 traditional and you're... Uh, You've got a buddy that's starting a new business that's got really some potential. Um, or let's say you see a real estate project down the street and you're like really undervalued. Or you're going to tie up some property that overpasses or a freeway exit's going in in two years and you know it. So that that you've got a three or four X opportunity. So it's really something that's going to blow up. 
and you got this 200 grand and you're ready to deploy it. Now, if you do that in your traditional and that 200 grand turns to 600 grand in the next three years or two years, then you freaking nail it. You're going to have to pay tax on 600 grand. Where if you would have just converted up front and paid the tax on the 200, no tax ever again. So when it hits 600, you're like, boom. So the, the more opportunity you have to three, five, whatever X that, that traditional, you want to rip this bandaid off all at once as fast as possible, because now you've frozen the value. I kind of call it like a Roth freeze. And I do love Dairy Queen. I call Mm -hmm. it a Roth freeze. I'm going to freeze the value pay the tax now and never pay it again. And so we have clients that are right on the cusp of a big deal. And they're like, hurry, hurry, hurry. I got to get this converted to Roth in a new LLC because I've got to deploy on this deal where I'm going to double my money in the next six months. It's totally worth it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No brainer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and you think again, the long-term investment horizon for you of maybe 10, 20, 30 years, I don't know where, wherever you're at right now, in terms of when you may want to start pulling from a retirement account, when you're going to hit 59 and a half. If you think of this money compounding over a 20 year, 30 year, that's what a lot of us might be at here. Doing this with Roth dollars, knowing that money is going to come out tax-free at the end is so like freaking awesome to know. I got zero tax on the way out. This is, this is uh, just the awesome strategy. So, um, but you might, again, I just want to come back to what we talked about at the beginning. If you're high income, the backdoor Roth IRA is for you. If you've maxed out your 401k at work, the backdoor Roth IRA is for you. Don't think. There's so many people that have just written this off of their to-do list and their financial planning that frankly have the money, that are excited, that would love this strategy, that have gotten misinformation and told there's no way into the party. Guys, the freaking backdoor, it might be a more popular way into the Roth IRA, actually. I'm actually curious how much Roth IRA dollars, new dollars going in, are coming in the back door than the front door. It mm. might be flipping the script here later on because mm. this is a. You can do this at Fidelity. You can, it's not like this is some crazy strategy we came up with. This salacious backdoor Roth IRA. By the way, if you're googling on this or trying to YouTube or get some videos, make sure you're putting in Roth IRA when you put in back door. We're yeah. not. We don't want to be responsible for anything else that pulls up. But all right, that's now, the strategy. I love it. Now I want to give you guys here. This is really. This is cool. This is so fun. This is the chunking strategy. Now, take a breath. Many of you may already know or understand that the tax system in America, the income tax system, is progressive. It will it changes based on your income level. So the more income you make, the higher your tax rate is. So you hit these break points. And when I hit this certain point, my tax rate on the next dollar goes up. And then I go along and oh, I hit another break point. My tax rate goes up again. Well, we've got seven brackets right now. And in these seven brackets, they start at 10% and go up to 37%. During that process, there's three, the three largest break points is a 10% increase, an 8% increase, and a 3% increase. All the rest are just two, two percenters. We don't care about that. So we've got a 10% jump. It goes from 12 to 22. We have an 8% jump from 24 to 32. And then a little 3% from 32 to 35. So when a client calls up and they go, hey, I'm sitting on this $200,000 traditional. Let's go back to that example. And I want to convert it because I got this deal over here that's going to two or three X. And I want to freeze that value. I want to pay the tax. And we'll say, okay, okay. Well, we're first going to ask, what could we offset that gain with? Do you have some losses over here? Do you have some real estate projects going on? Do you want to invest in some oil and gas? Do you have a solar project you're doing? Are you doing some electric? Are you getting some tax credits over here? Are you doing an HSA? I mean, we want to look look at the math because if we can reduce your tax bill, we want to keep you in a bracket that's lower than the next. So the biggest break point, and this is for married filing joint, is once you hit 364,000, you go from 24% to 32. This is the sweet, this is the spot where I have most of my conversations Mm -hmm. because clients are like, they're not down here in the 80 to 90 range on the 12 to 22. And you're not even worrying about a backdoor Roth and whether you need the Roth chunk or traditional. Exactly. You're right here in this spot. You're over this 228 for married where you can't even do a Roth IRA through the front door. So you're touching up on this. This is a lot of people. Yeah, this is a lot of people. So what we want to do, here's the moral of the story. I want to chunk as much as I can up to it that doesn't take me above $364,200. 
And that's going to keep me in a 24% bracket. Now I have clients that are like, rip the damn bandaid off. I'm going, I don't yeah. care. Cause I've got to get this money converted for this deal and it's worth it. But if you're able to offset that gain with some other strategy, and then you're trying to game it and keep it under 364, you miss that 8% increase. 8% on a hundred grand, that's eight grand. On this 200,000 we're talking about, like, that could be $16,000. Yeah. That's not chump change in the differential. So if we can keep you, so this is why chunking comes. So we might take a chunk of it and convert, keep it under 364. And then next year, do another chunk. So within three to four years, you get there, but you're saving that 8% increase. Yeah, And that that's the magic of this. Yeah. And one easy chunking method is just like, particularly at year end, it's just chunk half now and the next half on January 1st. That means, you know, the next... 30 days, you could have 100% Roth dollars, but you did break it up into two tax years. Mm -hmm. Another thing to think about just from a Roth conversion standpoint is what other losses can you generate? And our last Main Street Business podcast, by the way, um, we went over year-end tax planning strategies and ways you could be reducing your income to afford a Roth conversion. Yeah. Really? And so uh, make sure you're considering all of your tax planning in this too um, to that can give you some planning opportunities where you can actually afford to do a Roth conversion and not be hitting these next tax brackets. Yeah. And this is why for years I've told Matt, the backdoor Roth is a year-end strategy. Well, no, because you can still contribute before April 15th and convert then. Yeah, but if you have a chunking issue, mm -hmm. you got to talk about it right now. And so, and then if you're going to try to offset it with other strategies, you got to talk about it even more right now. Yeah. Uh, now for single people, not to leave you out in the cold, uh, <laughs> sorry, if you're going to do that conversion, that point where it goes from 24 to 32 is 182,000. So you wanna chunk your IRA until you hit 182 yeah. in, go, in total income. And, and you can go more, just know that that next dollar is gonna be at an 8% higher rate. Yeah, and so, that again, you for tuning the back door Roth, you're, you're phased out at 153. So again, you're like, this, this you're person in that is realm. like right here, you yeah. know, in this realm of where you need to deal with this. Yeah, it's so. So that's chunking. And this is the moral of the story. Sorry, I'm going to say that again. The takeaway <laughs> here is planning pays off. Planning pays off, people. This is what the wealthy do. One of their most important appointments during the year is their December appointment because they want to make sure they have a strategy session with an advisor. And it may not be their regular tax preparer. You can call our law firm office and get a consult in the next three weeks. You may find a new tax advisor on our tax pro network. You may have a great accountant, but they're waiting for you to call. They're not going to call you. Yeah. So you you got to take the initiative and do some planning. That's what wealthy people do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Love Any it. final takeaways on this? Yeah. Well, if you want to backdoor Roth IRA, you can set up at directedira.com. Like we said, we had that one-step process where you can go through it. There'll be some link in the show notes here too on some backdoor Roth IRA articles and guides that we have on that as well. So get over to directedira.com. And of course, we'll be back next week another amazing episode of the Directed IRA podcast. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Give everybody a gift for Christmas. Help them open up a Roth IRA. So if you have mm -hmm. nieces, nephews, grandchildren, children, and you're trying to figure out what to give them for Christmas, say, I'm going to open up an IRA for you and put a thousand bucks in there. Help them start to learn about financial literacy and saving. Have your little board meeting around Christmas and have all the kids or grandkids or brothers, sisters, mom, dads around the table and teach them what you're learning. The best way to learn this yourself is to teach it. Set them all around. Instead of turning on Christmas Vacation, turn on the Directed IRA podcast. We're on YouTube and they would love it. It would mm -hmm. probably be just a big winner. Yeah. You give everybody yeah. eggnog, yeah. pass it around. Yeah. So the moral of the story, if I could, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it's, it's, you know, we're sorry, we're getting a little sentimental here at the end, trying to do this, this send off. It is the holiday season. So you get all these little cheesy things, but um, do it for yourself first. Mm. And we talk about doing a Roth IRA for your kids. We've got a separate podcast on the Roth kids strategy and paying your kids to make that happen. It's a freaking awesome strategy. But do it for yourself too. And that's what I like about the teaching is like, you know how to get, you like said how to get good at something is teach it. But do it yourself. Do it for yourself first. Now, okay, yeah. final quiz question. We're going to finish with a quiz question or movie trivia today, okay. Tristan. Let's see if you I can just said do it for yourself out. first. And what movie is he talking about? Do it for yourself first. And it is a Christmas movie. Mm. Save yourself first. Got it, Tristan? Okay. Die Hard? I'll give you a hint. Vince Vaughn. Save yourself first. Yeah. It's fun, but not for Christmas. It is for Christmas. Oh, it's for Christmas yes. again for the win. <laughs> yes. Four Christmases. They were in the Range Rover on the way 
to his her dad's house. Yeah. And she was like, I can't believe you'd throw me under the bus. He's like, I mean, you got to save yourself first. When that flight attendant comes down, what do they say? You take the oxygen first. <laughs> if I don't take the oxygen first, we're both dying. You got to save yourself first. <laughs> and she's Put like, your mask on first. <laughs> that's right. Put your mask on first. So uh, that's right. there's a little for Christmas. Some of you got that. I want to applaud for those of you. That okay, the so Christmas. the real moral of the story is we all need to watch Four Christmases to get all of Mark's jokes. In. <laughs> well, that's a little offensive, but it wouldn't hurt. Enjoy that. <laughs> it's, it's a gift, really. It's a, it's a really good gift. All right. all right, thanks, everybody. Have a great holiday.